I'm out on the foggy California coast in the middle of summer. Let's go see what fungi we can find. Nice looking fib king. I'm out hiking on the California coast and it's foggy, but out here past the tree line, it's really dry, the ground is hard, and there's not a lot of fungal activity. However, straight ahead into the trees, there's all this moisture from the fog drip, and then at the base of this dug fir, there's a ton of coral mushroom. Look at all this. That's a really cool coral, and this will eventually get covered in mold. I think this was an Amanita, and it's all infected and looking totally weird over there. A couple little mushrooms back in there as well. Even where it looks dry, there can be moisture if you have fog and lots of trees, and that moisture just comes down to the ground, and there can be mushrooms everywhere. Ooh, this little guy is the spy, Clitopilus prunulus. It's a great habitat indicator for porcini. And where you see this growing, porcini will probably grow there. So these have kind of white gills, a distinctive farinaceous grain, cucumbery smell. Uh, and these apparently are pretty good to eat. I had a really good compound butter with them last fall. So I'm going to take this one and take it home to eat. Okay, so I found these spy mushrooms. And then right on the other side of the tree, there's a beautiful little button. Look at that. It's so pretty. Oh, it's so cute. Hey, friend. Mm, that's a nice one. That's a little buddy. I'm going to take this one because it's perfect, but there's another one right here. I'm going to leave that be. So thank you, Spy, for showing me where to find this beautiful little king. And I think this is a fib king because I'm under Douglas fir, Boletus fibrillosus. Cute little fib king. Ooh, here's a nice little patch of young chanterelles growing. These are all buttons. There's some more grass. There's more right here under the moss, and there's more over here at the base of this fern. That is pretty cool. There's lots of them. A lot of these are too small. I'm not going to pick them because chanterelles can grow for quite a while and you want to let them uh, get big enough to disperse their spores. Some of these nicer ones. Yeah, pretty good. These are kind of hard to harvest because they're a little fragile and they're hollow inside. So you can cut them and that works fine, but they do tend to break a lot. And sometimes I'm going to take a whole cluster. I'll take it off and then just trim off the bottom. But if I'm going to leave some to keep growing, I'll use my knife to cut them off. They do both plucking and cutting with chanterelles. Uh, whenever it feels right and depending on the mushroom that I'm harvesting. But look at those gorgeous Pacific golden chanterelles, Cantharellus formosus. Incredible decurrent ridges on the stem there. Found a couple of chanterelles trail side. I'm gonna carefully try to harvest these. Pull them out. Ooh, that's a gorgeous Cantharellus true chanterelle. There's a couple of them down there. Here's a cute little false chanterelle. This is Hygrophoropsis orantia. It's actually growing on this wood, which real chanterelles do not do. So I'm going to pick it to show you underneath. So Hygrophoropsis has real gills, unlike the ridges of a chanterelle, and it's much more orange, and it's kind of stringy and hollow. Here's an actual cantharelle, say true chanterelle. So you can see them side by side. There's the false chanterelle. There's a true chanterelle. That's Hygrophoropsis orantia. That's Cantharellus formosus. This isn't toxic. You can't eat these. They just don't taste great. And this is a much better edible mushroom. False true chanterelle. Ooh, who's this cute little guy? I see gills, but it looks kind of like a bolete on top. That is a gilled bolete, Phyloporus. That's pretty cool. These are edible, and they're not bad. Texture's a little squishy, but super bright yellow gills. Right here on the side of the trail, someone sliced it, but I found a gilled bolete. So that's pretty neat, and I love these. These actually are pretty good to eat. I might take this one home. And then right beside it, there's a whole bunch of chanterelles just down in the grass. It almost looked like someone had walked on them or something like that and they just trampled them down into the woods there so i didn't even notice that there were chanterelles right under their feet <laughs> oh well here's a zero camellus bolete so it has this red and yellow two-toned stem and those kind of angular yellow pores right now it's in the middle of getting colonized by hypomyces this kind of white mold that's taken over it so that's sort of a mild infection there's a one that is starting to really like decompose because it's covered in hypomyces and then behind me is one that's just completely covered, covered and colonized in Hypomyces mold, uh, the bolete eater. So I'm gonna flip this over the stick because it's gonna be real gross. Yeah, there you go. See, it's all yellow and nasty and it's just completely moldy. The pores have been taken over. 
uh, by the hypomyces. So similar to like a lobster mushroom, this has been parasitized. However, unlike a lobster mushroom, it's bitter and gross and toxic and inedible. Wow, that's a really pretty amanita. Look at those warts on top, that partial veil annulus hanging down, and a big old fat vulva at the bottom. I'll just leave that there for now, but wow. Gorgeous. Dang, that is one moldy mushroom. I think that was an Amanita, but it's been completely consumed by this fuzzy white mold, which is probably Hypomyces. Ooh, ooh look at all these little saprotrophic brown mushrooms. A whole bunch of them all over here amongst the conifer needles. Whee! Just snacking on a couple huckleberries. Mmm. Oh. Yum. Some huckleberries are brighter blue, more like a blueberry, and these actually do taste better to me. The darker ones are a little more bitter and tannic. Regardless of what shade they are, huckleberries are delicious. Mm. Ooh, look at that helvella. That's weird. Love that. Ooh, check this out. It's a huge patch of donut fungus, Aryzia. This is a ascomycete that associates with Doug fir. And it comes out after fire. And this is what it looks like underneath. Uh, it's pretty brittle, and it's actually a great indicator for chanterelle habitat. Ooh, there's some very pretty little jellies. Mm, nice and moist. Ooh, tiny little jelly brains. This is Dacromyces because it's growing on conifer. You can see it's a little less lobed and a little more brain-like here. So, good jellies. Ooh, oh, it's a burnt tree, so. And there's junk all over my hands, but here you go, Dacromyces. Ooh, so slimy. Ooh. That slippery membrane on top. So this is the hideous gumphidius organensis, it stains black. It is edible. But it's not super tasty. Um, it's okay. And I think there's some good recipes for it in Chad Hyatt's new cookbook. Usually when you prepare them, you want to take off this slime layer. These are really interesting ecologically because they're actually in Boletaceae, even though they have... And they're parasitic on Swillus, Slippery Jacks. So every time you find one of these, you'll know that there are Slippery Jacks that fruit around here. And I... Thank you, Gomphidius, for your service. Enjoy being a slimy little boy on the forest floor. Hopefully a slug will come eat you up. Cheers.